Model Engineering for Beginners, Part 32. Machining Difficulties in the Home Workshop. Currently I've been quite busy making some parts for a riding truck for my traction engine. I needed to make some very nice brass caps for the outside edge. Why brass? Just because it looks good. And the piece of brass that I selected was not actually brass. Just by the look of it, I knew it wasn't brass, but I thought I will use it and explain the problems that you have when you turn this stuff. It looks like brass. You could be forgiven for thinking it was brass, but it isn't. I once watched a TV programme with Fred Dibner on his traction engine going round the country, and I remember that he was having problems with the bearings on the front wheels, because he'd accidentally made them using brass, and they were subsequently wearing very badly. Believe me, it's a very easy mistake to make. Brass and a material called leaded bronze look very similar, and it's very easy to get them mixed up. This stuff, however, is entirely different. This is alum bronze, and it's terrible stuff. It's really bad stuff to turn in the home workshop. You need to use a cutting tool that is very sharp. The tool tip on my carbide tip tool is worn, so that will only cut from right to left. It will not face across the front. But that is nothing compared with drilling this stuff. The tailstock quill on my Boxford lathe is quite worn and the taper is not what it should be. Watch what happens. This twist drill just spins round in the work. After I've gone part of the way through with the first twist drill, I used a larger one. This appears to be cutting slightly better, but it's making a horrible noise. And I haven't gone very far into the hole yet. I think I'll try some oil. Finally, using the smaller drill, it goes all the way through. Once again, when I fit the larger one, it just spins round in the tailstock quill. The smaller drill bit was in the tailstock chuck. This one is directly into the quill. To get through this piece of metal successfully, I had to go back and use a slightly larger twist drill to get down the centre. But even after applying more oil and using the bigger twist drill, it still spun round in the tailstock. Note to self, I do need to relap this tailstock quill because it's very warm. But that's not the problem, it's the metal. It really grabs drills, it's horrible stuff to machine. Watch this. As you've just seen, this twist drill was firmly stuck in the hole, and even reversing the lathe didn't free it. I had to use a spanner on the flat part of the taper to free it. This alum bronze gets very hot very quickly and it still grabs drills even when you use oil. I thought I'd let it cool, so I changed the tool tip on the cutting tool, and now I can face across the front. Look at this, what a difference. But bear in mind this is a brand new tip. I had to do this because I need to make the bush a lot smaller than it is. This piece of metal that I'm working on in the first place is a chucking piece, which is what was left of a long piece of bar turned in a lathe which is much larger than this, in some industrial application. In this clip I've turned the part round to machine the other side. I haven't adjusted the position of the cutting tool, so it should more or less turn the same diameter, although for this job that is not all that important. And once that part of the job was done, I need to face across the front as before. Once again the tool tip is very sharp and cuts it beautifully. I'm cutting in both directions, you will notice. First of all, I cut from left to right, then I adjust the compound slide to take another cut from right to left. This just speeds up the job. And now, one more time, it's back to the drill. Finally, I put a hole in the piece of work big enough to allow me to bore the rest of it using a boring tool. This is the very strong negative rake boring tool that was sent to me by a viewer called Dan. And this boring tool cuts the hole in the centre perfectly. After two or three passes, I get the hole to just under 16 millimetres. The final sizing will be carried out once I have two pieces of metal to work on. And with some trepidation using my small parting tool, I'm going to attempt to part off half of the piece of metal, which is going to be far from successful at this speed. Time to go into back gear and slow the whole operation down. And now you will notice that the parting tool is actually cutting, and applying some oil makes it sound a lot better. The problem is now I'm using high-speed steel, 
and this will blunt far more easily than a carbide tip tool. This old Boxford lathe does actually have a coolant pump, but I guess that most beginners will not have access to coolant and that's the main reason I don't use it. Being gentle with the parting tool is the answer. Half of the work falls into the chip tray. I freely admit that it would have been much easier to have used coolant, but I don't use coolant for two reasons. It smells bad and can be very nasty at times, which reminds me of a girlfriend I had many, many years ago. The parting tool does not leave a very good finish on the work, but that's not important because, as you see, now I'm facing across the front of it. Carbide tip tool is still very sharp indeed, as it's done hardly any work, only this particular job. So the finish that I'm getting on the Allen bronze is very good. If your cutting tool isn't sharp, particularly if you're milling Allen bronze, you get a bruised appearance on the surface of the metal. I've just about completed one of the bushes, the last job is to remove the sharp edges. Here I'm using some emery cloth keeping my fingers well clear of the metal. And the last part of this job is to chamfer the edge, and yes, I do realise that the part is not running perfectly true, but it's near enough for rock and roll for this job. Now I'm going to fit the first bush to the wheel. First of all, I fit a silicone o-ring to the axle, followed by the bush and a split pin. Not only does the o-ring stop the bush from rattling, it spaces it away from the bearing a little bit. Both of the wheels spin very freely, and the whole assembly isn't very heavy although it's very strong. That's it for this episode. Stay safe and well, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists, and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.